training, which is obviously really pertinent to lots of us right now. And it's about those long runs. Quickly just saying hello to Facebook Live, just uh, quickly setting Facebook Live off. Twitter's been going for a moment, um, so now we've got them both going together. But yeah, I wanted to quickly answer a question from Chris, who's in our Transform Your Running Third Day Challenge group, asking about marathon pace in particular and why right now why marathon pace feels quite so hard and I think a lot of you guys will be able to relate to this I can certainly relate to this um, went out last night 18 miles and my intention was for the last six miles to be a kind of fast finish to ramp up to um, the idea was about five minutes per k which for me is marathon pace or intended marathon pace and that felt really really tough and it definitely starts those little questions in the back of your mind starts those little thoughts thinking wow how am I going to maintain this for a whole 26.2 miles this is going to be really tough so I wanted to quickly jump in and actually answer Chris's question directly because he I think is feeling exactly as I do or as I was last night before I checked in with myself and had a bit of a, a talk to myself and say actually you know this is you know this is normal um, so Chris says 15 mile long run today managed to stay pretty much bang on marathon pace for the first 10 miles good on you um, and then speed absolutely bombed. Any ideas beyond it being horrible weather, which it was certainly, I know Chris from where you are right now, not far from me, it definitely was cold. Um, any ideas other than being, being horrible weather, which was de really demoralizing to run for two and a half hours. He says he's being fairly consistent with his fueling and fluids and remembers this happening for a few long runs in last year's marathon prep. His effort is based um, mainly on heart rate and that's pretty consistent. Cool, so some interesting points there. Um, and again, it, it certainly paints a picture that I'm really familiar with. I know a bunch of you guys will be really familiar with as well, that those long runs, especially when we're trying to ramp it up and get a, a, a long run with some marathon pace blocks in as well, um, that getting into a roundabout as we are now, you know, the, the business end of your training blocks, so the kind of the, uh, the bigger weeks, the bigger long runs, it feels like marathon pace actually is almost perhaps a little bit too fast, a little bit too unsustainable. But what I really want to get across is that that is normal for where you are right now. And that I suppose the big caveat has to be as long as the marathon pace that you're targeting is reasonable based upon your current level of fitness and your level of fitness going into this training block. So as long as your goals and your marathon pace are correct, then what I'm about to say should stand. Okay, and it should make sense. Realistically, what you need to really consider when worrying about whether your current marathon pace feels sustainable or your intended marathon pace feels sustainable currently um, is that these long runs that you're doing right now, so let's say on a Sunday, are not in isolation. They're not one-off runs. Okay, so using my example this weekend, I did a 10-mile tempo on Saturday and then a long run on Sunday. That long run, that 18-mile long run on the Sunday, was straight away... In the, um, it was straight away flavoured by the fact that I'd done 10 miles tempo on Saturday. So there was that fatigue from the day before leading in. There was also the fatigue from the week before leading in. And in fact, if you want to get even more longer view, then actually this was the end of three weeks of build. So I'm on a programme where I build for three weeks, back off for a week, build for three weeks, then back off for a week. So this was the long run at the end of that third week before this week's an easier week. So I had really cumulative fatigue and this is the big point here cumulative fatigue in my legs even if it didn't manifest as aches and pains and whatnot there was an effect of the training that's gone prior to the, you know, in the prior days and in the prior weeks which will affect what you're going to be able to get out of those legs in that given long run now the difference between that given long run so for you yesterday chris 15 miles for me yesterday 18 miles um and for everyone else around here depending on where you're at where you're at what you're focusing on again it's different depending on where you are in your program but the big 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 thing is that you are carrying in the fatigue okay it's 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 really can't be underestimated the effect that, that fatigue will have even if you're not feeling those aches and pains the fatigue will be there Coming into your marathon, where you've you've tapered properly, you're in a position where you're well and truly well and truly rested, you are properly fueled, which we'll get onto in a second, and you are properly hydrated. All the good stuff, everything we're expecting you to be on race day, you peaked at the right time. It's going to feel worlds different to what it feels like now. You're not going to be carrying in that fatigue. It's why we have a taper at the end of our marathon program. 
so that we can keep the we can keep the intensity there the intensity needs to be there during your taper but when we get to that point we're backing off with the volume the legs remain fresh so you can get out and you can perform okay so don't be surprised right now if in the middle of those long runs if your coach or the program that you've taken off the internet says you know let's say 16 mile long run 18 mile long run with some marathon pace blocks in the middle or a marathon pace fast finish um, or something like that don't be surprised if marathon pace feels really really challenging it's that cumulative effect and that cumulative effect is what marathon training is all about it's what we should be after it's what we should be really trying to um trying to trying to achieve because what we're doing is we're getting to a position where we're running on tired legs and that's again one of the reasons why we don't have to run 26.2 miles in training for a marathon you know, we're coming into those longer runs, those 16 mile, 18 mile, 20 mile long runs with the fatigue in our legs, almost mimicking starting somewhere you know, further down the line in terms of the marathon. So we're kind of mimicking that, let's say, last two thirds of the marathon. OK, we're already we've got that easy work out of the um, you know, out, out of the way. We've got that easy work in the legs. It doesn't really. Yeah, that doesn't really count. Um, it's more about mimicking what those last two thirds of the marathon are going to feel like. That's what putting those cumulative miles on the legs throughout the week, that's what they do. Obviously, there's a lot more physiologically than that, but this is a really simplistic way of thinking about it. That's what they do. And that's how we can then get to the Sunday and we can make the most of running on tired legs on that Sunday to get us to a point where we're just pushing on, pushing on, pushing on that time on the feet cumulatively, that endurance cumulatively, and kind of that resilience cumulatively. Hopefully, that's, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that helps. The other thing I wanted to get across, of course, was the, the fueling side of things. Okay, so yes, the fueling that we're, we're taking on board um, while we're potentially out on the run or fueling that we're taking on board, you know, the, the 24 hours before our long run, but also, and I'm obviously talking about in that respect, um, food and drink, but think about from a muscular level, from a cellular level, the fuel that those muscle cells have to work with, um, that glycogen, then that, the glycogen, glycogen stores are not going to be at optimal levels as you come into that long run, not in the same way as they will be if you've got your nutrition right during your taper up to race day. Okay, if we're arriving on race day, fully loaded, ready to go, Fully able to um, fully able to sustain ourselves at kind of optimal output, optimal pace um, to hit those mar that marathon, that intended marathon pace on race day. That's going to look very different to how you are when you're coming into your long run depleted, which is kind of the situation right now. Okay, so it's going to feel hard. It's going to feel unsustainable, but don't forget that is what makes your body adapt. That is what makes your body putting your body under that stress is what makes your body turn around and say, right, before next time, I'm going to make some changes. So it's during those adaptation weeks, it's during the, 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 the off days in your program that your body actually rests, recovers, adapts, and gets you into a position where you're fitter, stronger, etc., etc., for it. Hopefully that makes sense, Chris. Hopefully that's helpful. I feel like I waffled through that a little bit. Um, guys on Facebook, I'd love for you guys in the comments to jump into this and let me know what you're thinking. Um, equally, guys here on Twitter, love to know your thoughts as well. I, uh, yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Bye now.